back somewhere around oh 2015 or so I started having weird network issues within the house I tried friggin everything absolutely everything everything I could possibly imagine and ultimately it was found that the problem was caused by a wireless access point that I had on the network and that would bring the network to its knees. I don't know why, but in the process of trying to eliminate every possible issue, I got a replacement cable modem, which is that Aris box that you see up there. When I got that, that caused other issues. It's supposed to be a drop-in replacement. You go, you hook it up, then you have to go to their website and authenticate it or whatever whatever they call it, register it, something like that. So you had to go and do all that. And I did, and that also handles the telephone for the house over voice over IP uh, that the cable company provides. Well, I replaced the modem and then I had issues with the telephone. The phone would ring, but it would only go kind of like, rit, and that was it. So you'd just get a very brief second of ring, and it would go out, and that was the entire end of it right there. So I went around the house, and I started disconnecting really unnecessary devices from the phone line, thinking it was a REN issue, ringer equivalence number issue. Now, this is going back to the days of Ma Bell, and basically the way it worked was they would give you 5.0 Ren. You would look at all of your telephones, on the bottom of them would be a number printed, Ren, or ringer equivalence number, and it would have a value. Your standard bell ringer type phone would be 1.0. If there was a phone with an electronic ringer, that might be 0.7, or it might even be 0.3, or anything like that. The whole idea was they gave you a 5, you had to go around and add up the REN of everything, and if it exceeded 5, then you had too many phones on the line, and that was that. So I needed something to boost the REN. So I had a video on that. It was called the Ring Voltage Booster 2 by Sandman Enterprises. And that was done in March of 2016. The uh, network issue, and when I got the modem, I think it was more of like a January 2016 kind of thing. Uh, anyways, the long and short of the story was I got that Sandman device. Let me show that to you now, and I'll tell you more about it. So this is the device here, Ring Voltage Booster 2. You have your line in, your line out, and it adds 7.5 Ren to the line. Very simple. has a power cord, switch mode power supply, and this should have solved the problem of the phones not ringing, except it didn't work. I paid a lot of good money for this, and it never ended up working. It's not that the device doesn't work, it does, but it didn't work with my phone system. Well, I ended up getting a bug up my ass the other day, uh, actually a couple of months ago, and I decided that I was going to reinvestigate why this didn't work. I did some troubleshooting with it the other day, and um, basically what I found was the whole idea of this was you connect this up, and I would take the line coming right out of my cable modem for the voice over IP for the whole phone system in the house plug it into here, out of that, into the rest of the house, and it would magically work. That was the idea, but unfortunately, it didn't work. 
when I'd hook it up that way, you can go back and take a look at the video that I had on this device. There is a link in the prescription for this, which was back in 2016, March of 2016. And I was not able to get it to work. In the troubleshooting I did, I found that if I plugged it into an end jack, in other words, a phone jack in the house that's empty, I could plug a line from that into here, out of that, to a phone, and it would add 7.5 Ren on that. And it would work every time that way, but it could not handle all of the phones in the house. So essentially it wasn't powerful enough. Now, I don't know the REN of a lot of these devices because some of them are modems that are in a computer and I'd have to tear computers upon computers upon computers apart in order to find the REN if it's even printed on the modem itself. Uh, it was a mess. So there were a lot of non-actual like telephone devices that it would be very hard to find the REN of. So adding all of that up really just wasn't an option. I needed a quote-unquote magic pill to make this work. I spoke to YouTuber Jordan Yu regarding this problem and he had recommended another device to me made by a company called Viking. Uh, let me show you the box for that. Sort of a plain white box. I have it unboxed obviously. But I like their slogan. Technology has changed. Our quality has not. Comes with a very, very nice manual, a couple of pages, extra features on top of that. And I paid about the same as I paid for that old one. And these are not cheap devices. This was, I think, about 150 some odd dollars. And I think I might have even paid about 170 180 for that Sandman device. And why and how I never returned it, I don't know. I should have, and unfortunately I didn't. There's no way they'll take it back this many years later. And I'm just screwed. I'm just screwed on that, and that's that. Uh, I guess I spoke to Jordan afterwards. But let's take a look at the manual, and I'll show you the device also. So anyway, here is the device. The Viking Ring Booster, model RG-10A, a loop and a power light. Let me disconnect that for now. Same kind of thing. Line in, out to phones, power connection. There's the information. And let me just see if there's anything worth noting on there. Just to bring up. Nope, not really. Nothing at all. But if we look at the manual now, well, actually, before we do that, look at this power supply compared to the Sandman power supply. Wow, okay? Not even just in physical size. Dinky switch mode transformer. A real magnetic transformer and input 120 volts AC 22 watts output 13.8 volts DC volts AC excuse me 1250 milliamps beefy transformer heavy transformer and it gets warm transformer Boost ringing power to up to 12 additional phones. Now, 12 is referring to 12.0 Ren. Much more powerful than 7.5. Could I theoretically hook the 7.5 into this thing and have it work? Maybe, but I, that's, that's a lot of Ren. <laughs> you know, simplify things if you can. Anyway, the RG-10 is capable of ringing 12 standard 1 Ren telephones and does not affect 
normal operation of the telephone line or features provided by the phone company, such as caller ID and call waiting. Multiple RG-10As may be used for even higher drive output. Wow! <laughs> well, this device has finally, after so many years of having phones, see, what happened was I disconnected a lot of superfluous devices like modems and that. I wanted them on the line because then they would ring when the computer was on. Uh, Things like that. I, I wanted them there some support caller ID, and they could display caller ID right on the computer screen if uh, configured properly. So it had its benefits, but I had to start disconnecting all of that crap because the phones wouldn't ring, and I needed to get the Ren down. The Sandman thing didn't work. Well, I haven't tried plugging every, every, everything in, but the way I left... The phone system, last I played with it, I had enough REN on the line to plug in two more phones. And one of those phones was going to be in the garage and one by the video editing desk. That has a different solution now as far as the video editing desk that has a like extra handset to a cordless phone type deal. So it doesn't need a phone line there. But even so... It would have been nice if there was one. Uh, there were options. There were options. But, anyways, uh, it never ended up happening. This device solves all of my problems. It was indeed the magic pill that I have been looking for. For a long time. For a long time. This also allows me to decommission another device that I had a video of, which was this Radio Shack line and use indicator that I had over by the networking and telephone equipment uh, area because this is uh, basically uh, superfluous because this does everything I need. I'll show it to you later, but... When this is hooked up, this does absolutely everything. When it's plugged in, you get a bright red power light, and that just stays on all the time. When the phone rings, that flickers with the ring, which is really nice. The loop light to the left of that comes on when a phone goes off hook. And if there's a rotary phone that's being dialed, it will flash the pulses that are created by that. So there is no need for this device anymore, at least where it was. So I decommissioned it. I had mounted it with double stick tape, but I'm sorry, with uh, hot glue back in the day. But unfortunately, when I took it off, it ruined the label on it. So I don't have any information on that. But... I don't need it anymore because this is going to do everything and the lights are brighter and easier to see. So now it's time to wire all of this in. But, of course, it's not that easy for me because I got a lot more going on. Before I get into that, uh, like I was saying, I didn't do a full, 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 full test hooking absolutely everything, everything back up. But I hooked most stuff back up, including devices that were, oh, probably a solid 4 Ren above what I could possibly, uh, or actually 2 Ren above what I could possibly hook up. The old way uh, it was, like I said, I could have 2 Ren available, uh, or 2 phones essentially, not necessarily even Ren. And it was able to just handle it. But one more device and the whole thing would just trip out and you just get that rip and that was it. So this now has solved it. I hooked up those two phones and added another two devices that had mechanical bells. 
and that would add up to almost two more Ren. Um, one is a, an ancient rotary phone, and another one is a mechanical bell ringer, which is, it was around, I think it's down over there somewhere, but I had a video on that. There's going to be a link in the description for that, so you can check all of that out. Anyways, like I said, wiring this in, for me, isn't as easy as it would seem. You'd think, oh, cable modem into this, out to the rest of the house, plug that in, you're done. No. So through the cobwebs, we can see the tangled mess that is here that I need to sort out. And I have uh, a plan as far as what I'm going to do. Uh, some of these things, I don't know if you can make the labels out with the way the camera is pointing. You see the big square box here, that's an electrical box, so that stays. To the left of that, there is a box, which is in the dark, kind of right there, that is the same type of box as that. And that says Telephone Junction Box 2, that's Telephone Junction Box 1. Basically what happened was, when I moved in the house, I wanted to add a phone line to the living room, it didn't have one. To the office, it didn't have one. To here, to there, to the basement, to over by the bar. Uh, you know, I wanted to, I added at least four or five uh, telephone lines to the, or telephone jacks to the house, and I had to wire all of that in. And I used this junction box here where all of the wires went in. However, I ran out of room on the screw terminals. There were just too many damn wires there. And I didn't want to wire nut it and make it look like crap, so I ended up jumpering out to the junction box number two, which is right there. To the right of that, it says telephone made main feed slash disconnect with that coiled up wire hanging there. And the other gray wire, which is this one right over here that's hanging, is line out from the cable modem. That normally would plug right into that main feed disconnect box and make all of the rest of the phones in the house live. But I've always wanted to have a phone here in the server area and I know what phone I want and that phone happens to be a rotary phone but in the event of a power outage that's not a good phone to have because if you have to call the electric company and they say press one for English you can't do that with a rotary phone they have devices that will convert that to touch tone, but I, I don't want to even get involved with that because my phone system supports rotary still, so I'll keep using that because I can. So, essentially, I need two phones here. I want that phone because that is that is the phone for here. And then something else like an AT&T 210 trim line, I think is the model number, with my memory jogs correctly. Uh, and that would have a stupid electronic ringer. Well, actually, the other one does too. But that would have an electronic ringer, and it would have touch tone, so I could use that in the event of anything. So I wanted to add two phones here. So essentially, the right way to do this would be to add a jack for the server room. Um, I actually sort of have one, and now I'm... Geez, I'm kind of thinking, no, I, I, I would need this thing anyway. Ah, that's kind of a shame. I sort of have what I need, but I don't have what I need. All right. <laughs> Not great, but it'll work. So, you see in the main feed disconnect, there's a splitter there. And it's kind of being used backwards because we're feeding the phone line in that thing. It's going into that box and out to the rest of the house where normally that would sort of be an output jack but because of voice over IP and cable modems and that this is how it is. So the right thing would be to add another phone jack just like that wired to the right. Now there's an electrical cable there, a black cable right there so I'd mount it just to the right of that up there and that would be the server room phone jack, but I think what I'm going to do instead is just use 
this guy. Five-way splitter, and that's that. It's kind of hokey. It's not the best way, but it's the best option that I really have available at the moment. And how do they have you mount this thing? Oh, I guess you sort of have to... See, it's... That's in the way. Uh, it's going to be troublesome. Anyways, if you look below the Telephone Junction Box 2, you might see on the bottom of the wood a uh, splotch. And that splotch is where that line and use indicator used to go. Uh, but now that is being decommissioned because it's no longer necessary. The ring voltage booster from Viking is going to do everything I need it to. So essentially this is going to go up there right under the junction box 2. The hangy wire over here is going to plug into this. I hope it's... Yeah, I should be able to get enough slack out of it. And that'll plug in here. This will plug into the main feed. The white cable that's there or actually, I'll have a different cable because that one is the is going to go into the ring booster that's hanging there. So I'll have a different cable anyways. So it's not a big deal. I'll definitely have enough slack. But I'm just going to mount this underneath because that's, I mean, where else? There's no other good place to put it. If I wanted to put it above that junction box, I wouldn't want it mounted upside down and even if I did you know with this reach and then bend around like that to play you know that's hokey at best so mounting it underneath right where that splotch is I'll see if I can kind of get in here a little bit so it would mount up to the bottom of that right there plenty of slack on that cable to plug in and then we're all set it's just a matter of getting up in there and doing it and then we have to deploy the ring booster as well so I think we're gonna end it right here so this was the discussion of what needs to be done I'm sort of doing this as I did the network upgrade which I did in four phases but this is a lot less structured because it's telephone there's nothing that you know all the jacks are connected You've got to make a choice to share your heart and voice. Hello? I've been looking. Guess who? Sam. What's up? Nothing. My date just canceled. Well, how about a date with me? You're my brother. So? Come on over. Watch the game. Play with the kids. Wax your car? Yeah, we'll have a great time. We miss you. Aw. And the car's really dirty. We're all connected. New York Telephone. So everything just hooks together, and that's why this thing will work, because all of the wires are just connected together, yellow to yellow, green to green, red to red, black to black. It's just all there, all wired together, so there's nothing more to do. I've already tested the ring booster, and that certainly does the trick, so really it's time to deploy it, and that is going to be in the next video. And in the next video, I will go ahead and mount this thing up and show you that. And I'll put the ring booster in place. And then, of course, we'll do a demonstration of that. And I'll show you some of the other goodies and how much crap I can actually hook up. So that's going to do it for this one. I know this was kind of just all talk and no action. But it at least set you up for what is coming as far as the telephone system upgrade or telephone network upgrade or telephone upgrade or I don't know what to call it exactly something like that but anyway that's going to be in the next part of this video thanks so much for watching I truly do appreciate it make sure you click like make sure you click subscribe and take care we'll see you next time bye bye